Hello and greetings from Porto. I just arrived here this early evening. It's about 5 p.m. from London. Um, my flight was unfortunately delayed almost two hours because the airport was closed for severe fog. I mean, crazy. Now it's sunny, not a cloud in the sky. I've got my amazing welcome drink of port from my hotel and I am so excited to kind of soak up and drink up all that Porto has to offer. However, before I go and hit the streets, I thought I would give you a tour of my amazing hotel room. I am staying at the Pestina Porto uh, Brasilia, Brasilia, I uh, Brasilia, I'll put it down on the screen. I definitely, my Portuguese needs a little working on, um, but I thought I would show you the room because it is just absolutely stunning. It's this charming boutique style hotel and it definitely, I kind of want to move in and just never leave. So let's get to it. Okay, so as you walk into the hotel room, you are greeted by this amazing view. So walk in. Hello, still in my airplane outfit, but oh my gosh, look at this room. I can't even handle how much I'm obsessed with it. They actually gave me a free upgrade to a king size bed, which for little old me all by myself feels like a lot, but I'm gonna enjoy it. We have a really nice little chaise lounge, a little desk area that I've already started to explode all of my stuff onto. Look at this cute little welcome message for me. Welcome Ms. Jessica Elizabeth Jolio. Enjoy your stay. I think I will. Um, but I love the little details. So like, look at this. They have their own hotel magazine called Wink, which is adorable. And everything has just like a little something special to it. So this says the time of your life, which is very cute. There's even actually, if you see here, there's a free phone that you can apparently use while you're here free of charge. So I might have to give that a spin, even though I do have my T-Mobile phone here from the US with data on it. Um, it's a little bit of like coffee and tea making facilities, but get this. I actually have a balcony, a little mini balcony that I can go out on. So we can, oh, there we go. Move it up, up, up. There we go. And then check this out. So, not a huge amount to see from here, but still a really lovely little view and just nice. You can open up the doors and let some of the kind of like the sights and the smells and the sounds of the city in. I love it. Now I want to show you the bathroom because I can't even handle how amazing it is. Ready for this? Da, 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 da. Ah. It is wow. I just. I am obsessed from the really chic marble floors to that amazing overhead shower. Like, look at this. It's just so pretty and white and pristine. Feels very zen. Um, some cute little products that I'm excited to try, as well as I love how they give you a few other little amenities like a shower cap, a nail kit, and a shoe buffer that you can use. Um, and then I'll just show you the closet area. So you have this whole area for your luggage as well as underneath. But then they also have this really nice little, just, you know, pretty standard, I think, for hotels, but mini bar, um, safe, and an area for to hang up your clothes. Probably not enough hanging bar space you know, for me plus a guest, to be honest. Um, but you know what? It's just me, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna give them a hard time on that. Um, but I will definitely take some B-roll footage of the rest of the hotel and share it with you because it's like very kind of like warm tones, kind of caramel browns, like very like dark and sexy kind of vibes. Um, and it's just, it's just lush and wonderful and, yeah, I just, I want to move in. I'm, it, it's happening. So, yeah. <laughs> 
So I will put that, hopefully some clips of that in after this, and then let's go hit the streets of Porto and start exploring. first day in Porto you know I was so disappointed that my flight was delayed two hours I thought oh no I really I had a good agenda for today I really you knew I wanted to see a few things have a little bit of dinner and drinks out I still ended up doing all of that so I think it's further proved to me that you really only need a long weekend in Porto to see a lot of the top sites in Porto. So I left my hotel at about 6 p.m. I went first to the Sao Bento train station, which was fantastic. It's only like a block and a half from my hotel. I feel a little silly for taking the Uber from the airport, although it was a fun Uber experience. I had a female driver who was blasting fun music, so we, we had a, a bit of a laugh. Um, but I really could have walked so shame on me maybe i'll do that on the way home to the airport um but the train station itself is magnificent it was built in 1900 and it's home to these kind of famous tiles that you see all over porto which i think they're i'm gonna butcher the name i'll i'll put it kind of down below here but the azulo um tiles those blue and white tiles and it took the designer about the artist 11 years to put all of the tiles up that you see in this station today which is pretty magnificent so i highly recommend if you're in porto you go check it out it's funny to think of a train station as a tourist attraction but hey you know how many people pass through grand central station in new york so it's not that out of line to to see that happening and you know it, it really only kind of depending on how many pictures you want to take it's not a place you really have to linger for a long time if anything i think instagram's probably ruined it a bit because everyone's taking selfies and pictures and posing and there's tons of people passing through actually to catch their train so you know it's it is a photo opportunity, it is a beautiful sight to see, but it's also a very functioning train station. So, um, however, I really enjoyed it. The second site that I went to see today was called the Church of St. Ildefonso. Probably also butchering that name. I'm sorry if anyone who speaks Portuguese is listening to this. It is actually also known as the Church of Souls and it was built on a former place of worship from the 13th century but it actually wasn't completed until about 1739 and what makes this church um, worth seeing when you come to Porto is it has the beautiful blue and white iconic tiles on the front it's a very kind of striking beautiful church and it also has two bell towers as well which I would have loved to hear them ringing while I was there. I unfortunately couldn't go in because mass was in session, so hoping I can sneak in on another point of my trip. The very last kind of sightseeing piece of my day, I went to the Clergios Tower and Church. It's another Baroque style church. This one was built between 1734 and I think 1746? 1748. <sighs> trying so hard um, but it's another beautiful striking church to go see and what makes this one really special is I got to go inside so going into the church is actually free 
and I highly recommend that you do it. The interior is out of this world beautiful. It's just, you know, I went to Vienna a while back and every single church was so ornate. You know, they really invested a lot of money and kind of, um, kind of thoughtfulness into how they design their churches. And I felt the same way when I went through this one. It's just, it's just, it, it takes your breath away. It's beautiful. I'm going to, moving my head over here so I can try and intersperse some images on the screen. But what really struck me is they have this stunningly beautiful kind of pink and gold dome in the church. It's breathtaking. And there's little elements um, all around the sides of it, kind of from different key kind of religious players during that time. Player, I don't know if players is the right word. People, key religious uh, people during that time. And, you know, there's a little bit of literature and information about them. So it's actually good, even if you're not a religious person or you're not Catholic, it's actually a great way to just kind of read, immerse, and learn. And it's a free um, thing that you can actually go see, which is amazing given how beautiful it is. The tower, on the other hand, is not free. It's 11 euros to get in. And unfortunately, I just was kind of hoping that you could just kind of waltz your way in and go up there. Turns out that's not the case. So you do have to pre-book a ticket for a specific time in advance. And I heard them saying to people in front of me in the line that the earliest time they could do today was 9 p.m. And I knew I wanted to have a late dinner out and I didn't want to be rushed. I also wasn't sure if I wanted to see the view um, at night versus maybe during the day or you know at dusk. So I'm gonna keep it in the back of my mind. I, I'm trying not to over schedule or overbook too much of this trip. Um, and there are a lot of amazing kind of viewpoints and vantage points you can see in Porto, whether it's kind of roof terrace bars or other kind of scenic vistas. So we'll see if I get to it or not. But after that, I had a wander kind of up the street nearby and I wandered um, up to a viewing point next to a really cool kind of uh, outdoor cocktail bar called Base. And I had read so many reviews about this place called Base and I didn't really quite get it because I looked at the pictures on Google Maps and I'm gonna put one in here. But having gone, I actually get it now. So it's on like an elevated park actually above kind of a little a little kind of slew of stores, a lot of cute boutique kind of stores, which would be fun to go back and shop at. But you can get a really nice photo opportunity of the church and the tower. Well, more so the tower side versus the church because the church is on one side and the tower is on the other. And you also get a nice view of some of the buildings that are tiled and in vibrant colors next to it. So I'm gonna put a few images. I also kind of went on down on kind of the street level, ground level after and took some nice pictures. So I will swap a few in here now, but it was a really nice way to just kind of get my bearings a bit more and see a bit more of Porto. So to round out my day after kind of just roaming the streets of Porto as you do, I started to realize it was getting late and I was hungry. Go figure. <laughs> so my friends gave me so many recommendations for food and the irony is I just started to wander through an area where a bunch of them were, not too far from the last church that I was at, but I was actually kind of a bit far away so I circled back and went back there. And I went to, I'm gonna try and look it up real quick because I just wanna make sure I'm pronouncing it right. I went to Honorato, like the word honor, H-O-N-O-R-A-T-O. And I had walked by it earlier and there was not a soul in there, but it looked like a really cute burger and gin place. It's an interesting thing because obviously, you know, Port is the Port Porto is the home of port wine. So there's a lot of activities that cater to consuming port wine here, but there's actually also a lot of places that specialize in gin and gin cocktails. And I saw this when I was in Lisbon as well. So I think it might just be a Portuguese thing and not unique to say Porto or Lisbon, but I decided to go, you know, I decided it's been a long day, I'm tired, feeling a little bit under the weather, I've had a little bit of a head cold, so you know what? I want a burger, a big, fat, juicy burger, and that's just, and hey, if a big goblet gin cocktail comes with it, I'm okay with that. 
So yes, I went to this place, Honorato. Um, I think I was the only tourist in there. Everyone was speaking Portuguese. The cocktail and drinks menu actually is only available in Portuguese. So the people who work there, despite maybe not having the best command of English, really tried hard to recommend a cocktail for me because they couldn't necessarily translate all of the ingredients word for word. So I said, listen, I like these types of gin drinks and they came back with kind of this cool, spicy gin drink with Sipsmith gin, which is ironic given that I live in London. I haven't tried a lot of uh, Sipsmith. I don't know why I can't pronounce that right now. I'm tired. Uh, Sipsmith. <laughs> cocktails um, but it was cool because it came with like dehydrated orange and a little bit of pepper in it um, and it was really nice. So I had that and then I had a really kind of decadent burger with gorgonzola and some kind of house made sweet potato chips with a little bit of mayo on the side. <laughs> really gluttonous of me to be honest but you know what some people starve a cold. I feed a cold. I want my energy back and I needed to climb all of those hills tomorrow. So I really enjoyed my meal there. I found the team that was working there to be so, 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 so friendly, accommodating. The fact that I don't speak Portuguese. Um, I was trying with Google Translate, but yeah, it didn't get me very far. So, but it was absolutely packed on a Friday night. I think I got there maybe like, uh, 8 30 or something and by the time i left around 10 people were still coming in to like start their night and have dinner and just completely jam-packed with locals having drinks at the bar having dinner at the table so i would definitely recommend it if you just want kind of a chill cool kind of uh burger joint kind of place i think my meal came to about 23 euros total but that's because i had like a really fancy goblet uh gin cocktail that was like 11 euros plus the burger so not too bad in the grand scheme of things i would say but porto in general is pretty cheap for food so if you did want to kind of go more on the cheap side there's lots of options for that as well but this place had a little more kind of buzz and vibrancy to it so i always think that to me adds a little bit to the ambiance so yeah so that concludes my first day in porto gosh i've probably talked your ear off now so hope you enjoyed following along i've got a few more days at it and i'll make sure to share with you kind of what i've been up to um the highlights and all that good stuff.